In Unify Drive application, in settings, you can set up multiple backup tasks. Each of them can choose UNES or popular cloud service as the destination. If I check the throughput chart, I observe three unique things. First, the curve is very smooth. In my manual backup activity, every time I see fluctuations because of the number of the files and the size difference of each file, the fluctuation is not avoidable in my manual backups. But here it's very smooth. The second observation is the throughput itself is not very great. Now I'm doing two parallel backups. The overall throughput is 200 megabytes. It's way lower than my manual throughput testing. The third observation is I have never encountered any error reported during the backup. But for the same set of files, if I do manual backup by using, let's say, rsync, it's guaranteed I will encounter issues here and there. So it's amazing. I have never encountered anything here in the UNES backup. So because of this, I'm really interested in how the backup is implemented by UNES. So I decide to go to the backend to find it out in this video. Don't be confused by the title of this video. I'm not going to explain what's the backup strategy for UNES, for example, the frequency destination choice. No, I'm only going to explore how backup is implemented in backend. Okay, let's get started. In the unified drive application, you can see at this moment, no backup drops are running. So then in the lower left, let me SSH to the UNES. Let me run HTOP. It's pretty quiet, right? So then let me start one backup job. For example, this hot backup. Okay, right away, you see this green color processes. The command is rclone. Now we have our clue about how the backup is done. Then let me stop the backup job we just started. So with all the jobs stopped in SSH, if I run ps command, try to find the occurrences of rclone. You can see I find one and only one process. The process is running in this mode, RCD. RCD stands for Remote Control Daemon. So at this moment, Arcolon is running in server mode. It's waiting for sync command to be sent to it. Let's pause here. Let's go to the web to see what's Arcolon at all. It's command line program to manage files on cloud storage. This cloud storage is important. In fact, that's why when you create a backup task in UNES, you are able to choose different cloud services. Ubiquiti doesn't support them one by one by themselves. Instead, Ubiquiti simply uses Arcolon, and Arcolon supports all the different sorts of cloud services. It is called the Swiss Army Knife of Cloud Storage. Just by reading this short introduction, you can already realize it has advantages over rsync, which was widely used before cloud age. Then go back to UNES. From this command line, we can see it's using this configuration file. So let's see what's defined in this file. It simply has four tasks, which correspond to the four tasks you can see on the UI. For the two tasks, which have other UNES devices as destination, their definition is very simple. It has the host and the parse protocol, which is SMB, the port number, exactly the information you need to define when you create the backup tasks, right? Then for the Google Drive, backup task, of course, you need to specify your account and the token to access Google Drive. And then for the Synology backup task, again, the type is SMB, and you need to specify host, pass, port, and the Synology username. So nothing special. Previously, we just talked about this first scenario. You do not have any active jobs running. 
you only have a RCD, the remote control daemon R clone running, right? Now from the unified drive, let me pick this task and let me run it, okay? While it's running in SSH, if I run the exact same PS command again, now it returns two processes. The first one, it is still the RCD process. The second one is the same R clone command, the same configuration file, but with different sub command. This time it's sync. Based on the parameters, you can tell it is exactly corresponding to this particular hot backup job. At this moment, if I run HTOP, the first process has white color, followed by multiple green color R clone. In HTOP, the white means system or root processes. The green ones are user processes. And from the first column, PID, you can see they are different. However, remember when we run PS command, it only returns two processes, right? Then why here we have so many green ones? In right side, let me SSH to the same UNES. Then let me run PS tree command. I want to see the process hierarchy for any green processes. Let me type in the first several digit 28977. Then just pick a random one, for example 07, which is one of the green ones, right? Let me run it. So this result reveals a lot of information. See the calling hierarchy is system D called unified drive. Unified drive called R clone. This one is the white process shown in HTOP. Then see the one we wanted to know, the green one, 07. See what's the difference? There are curly brackets around the R clone. So the curly brackets indicate this particular process is not really process. It's a thread. The system just want to distinguish the threads from real child process. The green ones are not child processes. Instead, they are simply threads of this white one. And then what's the white one in the right side? Let me run the PS command again. The white process in left side is exactly this second R clone process, which is corresponding to run the job for the backup. Just as illustrated in the diagram, the unified drive get the runtime information from the RCD R clone process, but when it need to run a job, it just simply run another R clone instance with subcommand sync. And this process will have multiple threads. Then if we go back to this PS command result, see how this R clone is executed. There are several important information See here, transfer 6. The transfers means the concurrent files will be processed at the same time. So there will be 6 files maximally being processed at the same time. Then here, this parameter means when processing each file, it will not use multiple threads, which means there will be six maximally concurrent threads processing six files. So that's how the R clone is executed when it need to do the sync for a backup drop. This way of running R clones result in the two observations we talked about in the beginning. First observation, the throughput chart, the curve is very smooth. The throughput is very stable because it's running six parallel threads. But at the same time, the throughput is not great. Why? Because it's not very aggressive when the R clone is being run by UNES. So we get answers about our first two observations observations already. Next, let me see whether just by increasing the parallel files processing, we can increase the throughput. So at this moment, you can see the read speed is way lower than 200 megabytes, right? Most of the time, it's even lower than 100 megabytes. Then let me go back to the backup drops. Let me stop this one. Then in the H top, you can see the R clone processes simply disappeared, right? Then in the SSH, I will manually run the R clone sync task. So this is the command I copied from the PS output, but I slightly modified these two parameters. Originally, the parallel transfers was 6, I double it to 12, and for each file, I double it to 2. So theoretically, I have 
four times potentials to increase the throughput, right? Then before I kick it off in the right side, let me SSH to the destination UNES Pro. Then let me show you the SMB status. Remember in the Arclone configuration, we already confirmed the Arclone task type is SMB, right? So in the destination UNES, let me run SMB status. I'm only interested in the current running processes. Okay, so you can see now there is only one process based on the IP address I assume is from my Mac machine is doing the time machine backup. So this process has nothing to do with the left side UNES Pro source machine. Then let me kick off the left side task. So you can see the current status is being returned using JSON. Then in the right side, let me run the exact same command again to show the SMB status. Okay, now I see a whole bunch of new processes. In fact, there are more than 24. I assume the system needs some extra processes to do something else. For example, listing files or getting status. But it doesn't matter because based on the left side and the right side status, it seems the system is running based on what I specified. Which means if the system's capacity allows, I should see increased throughput, right? Let me go to the unified drive for the source. If I go to dashboard from the real time read throughput, you know what? I don't really see a lot of change. Still, the read speed most of the time is lower than 100. So which means just by manually increasing the parallelism, sometimes it may not help. So in the destination UNES Pro, I already launched HTOP from the CPU and the memory utilization. You can see the memory is 100% exhausted already. Of course, the yellow color memory is for cache and the CPU is not really much better. It's also super busy. So I assume the reason I changed the parameter but it doesn't help is due to the weak hardware of the UNES. So this is just from UNES to UNES, right? If your destination is cloud services, the situation will be much more complicated because based on the destination service, for example, if it's S3, maybe you increase the parallelism, it will help you a lot. But if it's Google Drive, maybe it doesn't help at all because as I know, the Google Drive doesn't allow too many parallel connections at all. So basically it's case by case. However, even though any user may mess up the setting, I still think it's a good idea for Ubiquity to open up the parallel files and the threads settings on the UI. Let the users fine tune the settings. Let the user decide what's the parameter they are comfortable with, right? But it's ubiquity. I don't think that will happen. Okay, then let's move on. We just covered the scenario in the middle, which is you only have one active backup job. If you use other NAS, for example, Synology, you may know if you have multiple backup jobs, the system will run them in a sequential way. That's the thing I don't like. So let's see how ubiquitous NAS works. In the unified drive, let me start these two jobs at the same time. Start, start. In the SSH, if I run HTOP, we see more R-Clone threads, the green ones, and we see two white R-Clone processes. This already implies the system have two separate R-Clone processes running for the two backup drops. So we can confirm that by running ps command. The system has two R-Clone processes. They are doing sync. Each one has the same setting. For example, for the Synology one, it also uses six parallel files. Okay, then let's move on to the very last topic, which is the third observation I mentioned in the beginning of the video. How come I have never seen any sync error? for any of our jobs. It's unbelievable. I want to find out why, whether the system simply hides the errors, even if it encounters some. 
Let me use this Google Drive backup task as an example. If I force to run it, everything's fine. Then let me manually make up a error. I want to see how the system behaves. In the SSH, let me CD to the volume. My shared folder is called test. And let me CD to the dot data. It's supposed to have the files I want to sync to Google Drive. Currently, there's nothing. That's why the job finished right away. Now let me create a new file, change its owner to root, change its access to 600 so that only root can access it. Okay, now if I list the file again, you can see the only file has this type of access. If I do the backup, I expect the job to fail because the Ubiquiti Drive application shouldn't have access to read from this file. From Unified Drive, let me start the backup. Okay, it does fail, but see the error? It doesn't give you any details. So the good thing is the system doesn't really hide the error. But the bad thing is in the same ubiquitous way, it thinks it's smarter. So it doesn't tell you the exact detailed information. It gives you a very, very user-friendly error. So let's see whether from backend we can find more about the error details. Let me go to syslog. I don't see any file or folder about our clone. Then if I try to see the journals, if I only want to see the entries logged by Unified Drive, I don't see anything related to the test.txt file error. Then I know the Unified Drive uses PostgreSQL as the database. So let me connect to the database to see whether I can see any clue about the error. Let me run the psql command. Okay, I'm in. Then run dt to list the tables. There is a table for syslogs. I know this one is somehow related to what the system display here in the system log. So let me first check the UI. The exact same error as the pop-up. By the way, the learn more hyperlink only direct you to a ubiquitous web page. It doesn't really help. Then let me run this select statement to see whether I can see any message which contains fail in the text. I believe the very last one is corresponding to the error we just encountered. Detailed error contains the exact same informative text as shown on the UI. However, this no exact error situation is not the fault of our clone. So let me show you why. If I manually run the our clone command under the user unify drive, so I'm going to run the command as unify drive, and this is the exact command for this Google Drive backup task. So let me run it. Yeah, you can see the system tried three times. Every time it got the exact error, permission denied. This error was already returned by the rclone command back to the Unify Drive application. What Ubiquiti needs to do is simply display the real error message instead of that user-friendly pop-up. Apparently, when it comes to reporting or system logging, there's something to improve from Ubiquiti side. Okay. This ends the video. Thanks for watching.